This is Hannibal here from TheHannibalTV.com, and I am talking today to, he's held numerous titles in NWA, WWE, Puerto Rico, all over the world, very accomplished wrestler. He's been wrestling for about 20 years. He used to be known as Damian Sandow. Now I believe he's known as Aaron Stevens, wrestling for the United Wrestling Network and NWA. How are you doing today, sir? I am lovely. How are you? Other than the cold weather, I'm excellent. Excited where, about Halloween. Where are you in, Toronto? Uh, about four hours from Toronto in Ottawa, where you have wrestled before. Absolutely. No, and uh, yeah, I know they're getting some snow up there. That's uh, the whole Northeast, right? Even on my, my parents, who um, they live in a very small town in Massachusetts, they're they've got it too so that's which is funny because last time i think i saw you we were in isla verde ave in san juan right yes i wasn't sure if you'd remember that or not but of course i do they, yes absolutely yeah they sent you up there i remember specifically because you did a strap match where the yeah. fans were given belts to yep. hit you with whenever you were yep. thrown outside the ring which yep. must have been an experience for you it was, and it only prepared me for years later um, in Trinidad when Victor Jovica would do that, except um, there, were, there was a lot more belts with Victor Jovica. Yeah, I don't know if that would work in the U.S., a gimmick like that, even yep. though Puerto Rico is part of the U.S. technically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I don't know if that would go over too well in the continental United States. <laughs> And I remember you telling me back then that you were quite a ladies' man back in those days. No, no, I was not. I was. <laughs> I was not. No. I I, uh, I seem to recall a story you said like there was one girl you told to meet somewhere with absolutely no intention of meeting her. No, I can't remember that. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you've wiped it out of your brain, but you said I, uh, she was being clingy or something, so you started doing that. But it doesn't matter because I don't the fans that, want I, to hear you talk about the United I'm Wrestling yeah. Network. Um, what do you got cooking right I, now? I'm sorry, but I was, uh, again, I was young and stupid, but I, I don't remember doing that. Okay. Well, what a jerk if I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were, we were both a lot younger then. Hmm. You luckily have kept your hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so you're, we're here to talk about the NWA United Wrestling Network. I put the link both on my thehannibaltv.com website and in the video description of, of how people can order those pay-per-views. They're every week, every Tuesday, $7.99, or you can buy four for $23.99. How did you become involved with them? Because I understand... You were retired for several years after your Impact Wrestling run. Well, what happened was, um, you know, I'd left WWE and did some Impact shows and then just, um, you know, had kind of had it with wrestling a little bit. And I, I wanted to try something else. And um, so I went and, um, you know, out in L.A. and did the acting thing and am and, and still doing it. But um, I was on a... Um, I was on a TV show. I was actually working in Hawaii and uh, I got a call from Billy Corgan and said, Hey, we're doing some NWA tapings. You should come out. Um, so something like, yeah, whatever. So I went and then saw the NWA studio and I was just blown away. I'm like, Oh, okay. Like, this is what this is. This is what this is going to be. Yeah. So I, I was very, very happy. Um, and then, uh, you know, great, great time with uh with the nwa and uh and again you know i was just recently robbed out of the uh, nwa third degree national championship and and um that uh you know that, that will be addressed later but then um from there you know i had reconnected with a marquez who asked me to help out um you know do some creative stuff with the uh, championship wrestling from hollywood show which uh you know it airs in syndication all over the united states which is pretty cool and uh, then after that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, when primetime started, uh, I was just kind of like 
brought into the fold there. And it's, it's been, it's been cool. It's been, again, a, a different aspect of the business that I normally wouldn't, um, you know, ha have ever thought about doing. So that's, that's been good. As far as the creative side, I know you have acting experience, as you mentioned, working in Hawaii, but you've done some Shakespearean acting reportedly as well. Has, has that helped you uh, putting angles together and so forth? Um, no, because I, I tell you what, the, um, the best training for Shakespearean acting is wrestling. And I, I can say that it's so funny, right? It's like to just be able to talk and, you know, almost like at, at some point there's a certain like, you know, you have to kind of be an orator, if you will. Um, so there's an oratory element. And then um, from there, I mean, obviously knowing your lines and stuff, but um, it's just a really, really, in my opinion, just wrestling prepares you for a lot. Um, and it even prepared me for uh, some film and television acting because, you know, in, in essence of like, I had that confidence, I had to tone it down. You know, I, I had to just kind of dial it in uh, because Shakespearean acting, you're on a stage and everything is great. And then and the language in Shakespeare is so colorful. It's like, uh, it's funny because um, I, I've never performed in a Shakespeare play, um, but I, I did the training and everything. And it's like the language just does all the work. It's, it's so cool to, um, you know, to, to have a writer that you just, all you pretty much have to do is say them, you know, I mean, obviously, and there's far better actors and worse actors, but uh, there's, there's a, uh, you know, a very easy, easy um, thing to do, in my opinion, is Shakespeare and, and, and stand out and have a good performance because the language is so good. Now, I'm noticing people are popping up with questions. Do you see them, or am I supposed to see them? I'm doing... Uh, I'll ask. They're, they're, they're putting comments up, but I'll ask you some of their questions uh, as we go. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm just putting, like, if more of the comments up for now. Okay, if I'm not uh, responding anything, I have, have there been any negative comments? Are people... Not yet. What they're all your fans so far. Oh, good. They all love you. Uh... Someone says one of us should have the strap in the NWA instead of all this. I agree on that one. Uh, loved your work in WWE. Wish you were pushed more. Do you still watch WWE? Jonathan Coleman asks. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, only because I um, my wrestling burnout is pretty much like all my creative energy is into what I'm doing now. And um you know, I trust the people around me. Like if I'm doing an idea that's currently being done or has been done on WWE or, or anywhere else in the last several years, that they'll say, Oh, Aaron, we can't do that. Cause so-and-so did it, but it hasn't happened yet. So me kind of removing myself like from the entire industry so I can just focus on me. It, it allows me not to be, and I don't want to say contaminated, but it allows me not to be influenced by whatever's going on anywhere else. That is a good point, and I uh, I think that's a good way to go about it. As far as the current angles you're involved with on these United Wrestling Network pay-per-views, now that you've lost the national title to Trevor Murdoch, are you going to try and go after it? Are you going to go after the world title like uh, Nick Aldis has? Or I understand there's a tournament now for the creation of this United Wrestling Network title as well. Yes. Uh, a tournament that I was not invited to be in. Uh, very upset. And um, I think we're just going to have to watch Primetime Live and see um, what I do next because, you know, I, I've issued a challenge to Eli Drake and James Storm for the tag titles. You know, there, there's some issues with the question marks visa. But uh, once, you know, the Mongrovian um, government kind of, gets their ducks in a row and I, which should be very very soon uh i think the question mark will be you know um where he needs to be shall we say you started wrestling very young and you actually were signed to wwe development very young i guess you were always a wrestling fan growing up and you wanted to be a wrestler all your life i imagine mm -hmm. how did you go about uh, uh, it? And I was in a department store, and they had those old-school arcade games. Um, I asked my mom if I could go 
play one. She said, if you behave yourself. So I did. She gave me a quarter. I played it. It happened to be a wrestling game. Didn't know what I was doing. I lost. And then the little figure taunted me on the screen. So I just um, pretty much just said, uh, you know what? I'm going to be a wrestler. And that's kind of what happened. How did you go about your training? I understand you did some training at Killer Kowalski's school. Was he still alive back then? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was, um, I started, I was really young. I was like 98. So. Was it after, I guess that's after yeah, China and Triple H had gone through then. So what was he like as a person? Because we've heard from some people that he was very hands-off as a trainer, but there's been so many stars that have come out of that school. Um, he, he, my first there, um, taught me how to lock up, taught me the hammer lock, got in the ring. Uh, I did a drop kick my first day with him. Um, gave me a knee drop. He was about a uh, my, I actually, my first ever, I worked for Tony Rumble was NWA New England. Um, so my second time for Fred Sparta, um, yeah, killer, he ref that. So I, he was with me, he was as hands on as he could have been. So he actually refereed a match of yours. That's pretty cool. And how did you go about uh, getting signed by WWE so young? It seemed like you got WWE extra jobs when you were like maybe 19 or 20. Uh, yeah, you know, I, Pretty much did a training camp. Uh, Dr. Tom saw me, and that was it. <laughs> that was like, Tom's my guy. I, I owe Dr. Tom. I mean, if it wasn't for Dr. Tom, I would have had no career. I, he, he has always been in my corner, <clears throat> um, and Dr. Tom is the best. And I, I will say that till the cows come home. Um, I will defend that man till my last breath, and I mean that. Um, you know, if, if you're in the area and you want to get trained to be a wrestler, go to his school. Um, the man is a just fountain of knowledge. And the thing about Tom, you know, I'm not going to get into what happened with him in WWE because I don't really, you know, my thing is I, I don't do like shoot interviews. I don't like to um, to kind of release internal business just as I wouldn't expect anyone to release like internal business, like anyone watching the show or anything like to their own stuff. Uh and especially if it's none of my business, like I'm not a gossip guy, but um, Tom's the best trainer out there. Um, you know, Tom Pritchard and Rip Rogers. Um, yeah. You know, Tom, he knew how to cipher. He knew the guys that wanted it. He knew guys that um, had the aptitude for it. And he really didn't have time for guys who shouldn't have been there. And there was a lot of people that shouldn't have been there uh, in developmental, I know. And, um, you know, Tom just would rather focus on what he likes. But, uh, no, Dr. Tom, two thumbs up in my book. And I will challenge anyone who says otherwise. Yeah, he's a great guy. I've done several interviews with him. And his school is up in Knoxville that he runs with uh, Kane. You mentioned about wrestlers go doing shoot interviews and, you know, putting their dirty laundry out public. What do you think about wrestlers that uh, publicly ask for their release and then kind of, like, as you say, reveal reveal inside information where, like, you wouldn't do that in a normal job? Yeah. Um, you know, look, my, my opinion, every, everyone's different, right? We're all going to have our own way of dealing with a situation. We all have... Um, you know, our own way of, of expressing ourselves, right? And uh, I don't want into any kind of like, you know, psychological rabbit hole here or anything. But, um, you know, look, as individuals, we're responsible for what we do, right? We have a choice. We can, we can take one of two roads, right? And I'm not even going to say there's a high road and there's a low road because who knows? I'm not going to judge that, right? If people want to talk about what they did and, and stuff like that, that's fine. Uh, if they want to talk about other people, especially people with families and kids and stuff like that, I have an issue with that. Um, I, I, I really don't think, you know, as, as adults, uh, and, and by adults, I mean, you know, we're all, well, we are obviously adults. We're all wrestlers, right? Um, but 
we should not cross that line of other people's families. And uh, if we have an issue with someone, okay, and if you want to air it in public, go ahead. Uh, that's not my thing. Um, you know, I'm not going to judge, but, um, you know, I, I don't have a lot of respect for like people who talk about oh, people's kids and what kind of stuff they do. It's just, to me, it's very, very off-putting. And, um, you know, look, WWE, at the end of the day, they were very good to me. Um, I have no desire to go back there. Um, you know, I really, they haven't contacted me. I haven't contacted them. So, like, there, I don't think there's a desire really either way. And um, and that's not a bad thing. It's, it's like, you know, it's like dating someone. Hey, grateful for our time together. Thank you very much. Um, you know, and there's no need to to keep in contact. There's no need to talk bad about them. It's just like, let's let's go. You know, as it's funny because my life has always been living stages, right? It's always like, okay, I want to be a wrestler. So then this took me on a really weird path. And then wrestling took me on a weird path. And then it was just, you know, when I had asked uh, Mark Carano for my release, um, you know, it was, it was a couple weeks before it happened. Um, you know, I was just done and they were gracious enough to do that. So like, you know, th there's th the drama. It's like, and, and look, is it a perfect work environment? Absolutely not. And do I agree with a lot of their stuff? Absolutely not. I don't agree with a lot of the policies. I don't agree with a lot of, um, you know, things from a management standpoint, but who cares? I mean, you don't have to agree on everything to uh, to say, you know what, my time there was good. Overall, it was very good. So who cares? Like, just let it, you know, let it be. I wish people had that attitude a little more, you know? I mean, even if you go to any job, you know, why would you feel so emotionally invested in one company as opposed to if you were working anywhere else? You know, if you're working at a department store, if you were working at a a mechanic shop, you know, wherever, if you're a professor at a college, like, like sometimes the institution and the individual part ways, and it's not always a bad thing. Yeah. When I interviewed Rob Van Dam the other week, a lot of people were saying he should be spending like his last good years in WWE while he's still in shape enough to perform well, but maybe he doesn't want to, maybe it's not the world to him and He's happy just wrestling a light schedule. It's not the be all end all of everything, but but my Bill won few years. My, my, well, first of all, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm aging in reverse. So think about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Sorry. I was gonna say uh, Bill was asking you about your program with the Miz, which people remember, Damian Mizdow. Hmm? Uh, any memories of that? I was actually doing security one night when you were. Uh, I think it was the first time you were Macho Mizdow in uh, Ottawa. Here, I was working at the arena. Oh wow! Wow, well, yeah, that wasn't um, that wasn't a, one of my favorite nights. <laughs> um, <laughs> You were over, uh, though. I remember okay. the crowd popped for that. Thank you. <laughs> um, but, no, we um, – yeah, uh, just great chemistry, really. Miz and I had such great chemistry, and it was so, so – just easy. Like, he he would do his thing, and he was so gracious enough with me, um, and, and neither of us were selfish. We were all working for the cause, which I think is that that's why we were kind of like – build off of that synergy and turn it into something special. And and if it wasn't for Miz, there'd be no Miz now, as we all know. So, A couple of people on here have asked about your Sunday night heat work with Raven, who uh, is an interesting guy for sure. Smart man. Yes. Um, I worked with Raven right before I went to OVW. Um, I actually got to work him on Sunday night heat where he did an angle where he kind of like like WWE shortly after that. And then I got to work him on uh, the independence for uh, Mike Sparta before I went to OBW. And he was just so cool. Like Raven is, I, in my book, I have nothing bad to say about him. Charles wants to know if working with Billy Corgan has been a good experience. And is it interesting working with someone who is an outsider of the industry? Um, well, 
Well, first of all, uh, to call him an outsider of the industry, I don't necessarily know because, I mean, he owns the NWA. So I think that's about as in as you can be, um, you know, without having a, uh, a Greenwich P.O. box or address. Um, so, no, like, but but, but I do, I, I get the, um, the essence of the question, right? And my first meeting with Billy was at Impact, and uh, we had had, like, you know, a mutual friend, and um, so we... You know, kind of met and talking and um, got off into this conversation about WrestleMania three, right. With Piper versus Adrian Adonis and all that. And it was a while. Like we were there probably I'd say around 15 minutes and then left. And I just went like, wow, that was really cool. That's awesome. And then I went, Oh yeah, that that's the lead singer of the smashing pumpkins. Like that's Billy Corgan. It was so that, that was always cool. And he, he is such a fan. And um, you know, I, I think him and I are similar in the sense of like at heart we're both wrestling traditionalists but we kind of think outside the box and i think that's why we get along so well so yeah and i think the guy just meant that he wasn't a wrestler before but he's been in the wrestling business a while now as you mentioned from the impact days back when he was uh booking somewhat for impact there was a fan on here that wanted to know your experience working with Cody Rhodes in WWE. Uh, Cody and I were really, I, I tell you what, and I, it's funny, I, I said this recently too, like never ever had a bad match, never had a bad segment. Business-wise, we were, we were great, and uh, we traveled together. We had a lot of fun in the car. Um, yeah, very positive working for him, and, uh, you know, I'm proud of everything he's doing. And, uh, you know, I know that his, uh, his dad is – very proud of him too looking down on him so is it true that his dad gave you the idea for the robe that you wore when you became damien sandow and went when kind of the lanny poffo direction mm -hmm. what um what was the first part of the question i'm sorry uh did dusty Rhodes come up with the uh the robe idea because i read online that he did come up with that yes he did absolutely Absolutely. He uh, told me to get it, so I did. <laughs> and you kind of remind me of Laddie Poffo, kind of from your style and the way you talk. Uh, you're less eccentric than him, but uh, was he someone that you watched at all when you were growing up, or is it just a coincidence that you guys are kind of similar in some ways? So when you say so, like if I was to talk and rhyme all the time, that would be sublime, right? That would be what you're trying to make me see. See, I just made a little poem right now. You um, did. No, so the, uh, like, I was, when I was a kid, one of my worst memories was when Hogan lost the match to the genius via count out. But I was a kid and I didn't know that the title doesn't change hands on a count out. And um, like, I, I mean, I was a small child and uh, God, I, I think, I just remember I was like, just beside myself. And I, I couldn't have been more than six, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, I, um, it stuck with me right now. I was always like, that's, that's what heat is. So I was always a fan of the genius. And then um, when I initially in FCW, I started um, wearing pink tights, just acting like Rip Rogers, right? Just as kind of a rib on a house show. And that kind of just evolved into that. And then I said, well, if I'm going to do that, I might as well watch the genius too. And, um, you know, I, he never got the credit he deserved um, because people hated him. They hated him. Um, you know, like, okay, not only am I the world's smartest man, but I'm so smart. I'm going to rhyme everything I say. Not only am I going to rhyme everything I say, be the world's smartest man, have the cap and gown, but I'm going to do cartwheels and just for extra heat, just for a little added bonus. I'm going to just do cartwheels and flips and everything else. So that to me, I mean, that's, there, there was layers to that character. Yeah, it's too bad they didn't bring him in at any point in that period to do a little segment with you, but who knows? Maybe we'll see that down the road in United Wrestling Network. That would be cool. You never know. 
You never know. Long Duck Dong has an unusual question here. Do you feel there will ever be... It, pardon me, sorry, there's a delay in the... Uh... Sorry, uh, my bad. Uh, do you feel there will ever be a cross-wrestling company like when WWE invaded WCW but actually allow wrestlers to like compete? I guess he means like, would there ever be a real cross-promotion invasion where there would be two separate companies and not like WWE by WCW. You know, um, I would hope so. And I think now with, you know, the way the world is and things are kind of starting to sort out and things are going to be different. And I think one thing is like, you're, you're seeing a lot more companies work together, right? Like we we've seen, um, you know, obviously like primetime live, We've seen the NWA um, and the United Wrestling Network work together. Um, and we've seen AEW and the United Wrestling Network work together and MLW, right? I mean, we've seen people from everywhere. So I think that now people are much more open to discourse and, and, and in keeping in line with like what the fans want to see and what would be good for business and, uh, and what would be good for the fans because what's good for the fans is good for business. And I'm, I'm excited and... Um, so uh, long, I will actually uh, stand with you in your your hope that that happens one day. As far as your creative freedom right now, uh, Aberrations wants to know how much creative freedom do you have with United Wrestling Network? I guess because uh, you're involved in creative, you probably have more than some wrestlers, but from what I understand, there is more freedom overall there, isn't there? There is. There's um, There's a lot of freedom there. There's uh, a lot of freedom in the NWA. Um, you know, and I had freedom and impact, too. Um, I definitely had freedom and impact. Um, but, you know, NWA, I, <laughs> that was like just, <laughs> you know, that, that I, I, I'm very sad that we had to kind of, cease everything when the pandemic happened because we were getting ready to do that big show and um nwa i tell you like everyone was really cooking there and and that was a uh, kind of let down but we'll be back and we are back and we're we're rolling and we're on the way so just something to uh again look forward to more but uh but in terms of my freedom yeah i mean nwa has been amazing united has been amazing um i i pretty much um yeah i i'm i'm very blessed in that department yeah, I like the concept of uh, the studio wrestling format that NWA brought back, and it is a terrible shame that uh, you guys got screwed over with your big show with the lockdown, but it screwed over a lot of people. Uh, TNA, as you mentioned, you had freedom there. There's a fan that wants to know if you enjoyed your time over there with TNA. Yes, I did. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Um. Yeah, just I no complaints there. Here's a good question from Rock Forty Six. Anywhere I'm, I mean, you can always say I wish this was different and this was bad, but I, at the end of the day, it's like look, I can still walk. Um, as I've said before, I'm aging in reverse now, uh, so I I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna get. I, I'm not mad at anyone, <laughs> to be honest with you. Like no. Rec Forty Six wants to know about your promos against Ric Flair. He said they were fantastic. <laughs> Unless he's joking. <laughs> I, yeah, we don't know if he's joking or not. I mean, I, I did do some stuff. I think it was like, what do they call that? Like um, when they have all the fans come in and stuff. Um, Meet and greets. No, 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 no. Um, Fan, not fan fest. It's like when they, when they have WrestleMania or the Royal Rumble, they have like access. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I did something with him there. And, um, but I don't, I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. I, I don't necessarily remember it being super. So maybe he was joking, but at which point I don't get the flair reference. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, but I I actually watched some of your WWE stuff because I knew you a little bit. 
just out of curiosity, but I haven't followed that product closely for like over 10 years. So I wouldn't have seen that, unfortunately. Isban wants to know if you have any memorable stories on Vince, Linda, or Shane. Uh, no. No, and I'm sorry uh, that's that short of an answer, but no. Okay. That's very interesting. <laughs> and someone earlier was asking if you had any memories of the big show working with him. A blast. Always a blast. Always fun. Um, that nothing I have nothing negative to say about Big Show in the ring or out of the ring. He's thumbs up in my book. Big Beefs 35 says Damian Sandow's gimmick was so over in WWE, more over than most. Is that why they pulled the plug on your potential title run? You have not the answer to that. Uh, but I understand that you were the first guy not to win his Money in the Bank match, and that kind of hurt your momentum, even though you were still popular with the fans. As I can see by all the positive comments on here, usually there's more uh, haters. You're pretty oh, wow. well liked. It, to, to everyone out there, um, you know, I thank you all that are in this chat, um, just with your positive comments that – I can't see them because I'm on my iPhone right now, but um, I want to let you know that it means the world to me, and thank you, and I truly mean that. Uh, and this is Aaron talking, not Damien Sandow or any kind of incarnation of any character I've done. Thank you. Um, and you guys made my career, so I I know that, and I never forget that. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I just kind of more or less Hannibal, like, I think like with wrestling, right? Like we were, we were talking about it before, um, like the negativity, if, if there was just less negativity all around and that goes from the administration all the way down to the talent. And, and look, I've been guilty at times too. You're just frustrated and you don't want to go right. We've all been there, but it's, it's, it's a learning curve and you or learning process. Right. And you, um, you go through it and you just, you know, you come out. Okay. So my opinion, sorry, I got off on a little rant there. No problem at all. Noah wants to know uh, what it was like training with Rip Rogers, who is a very funny character and entertaining guy. Oh, yes, he is. Um, if it wasn't for Rip, I would not have the skill set to go wrestle for any promotion in the world uh, and wrestle against anyone in the world with full confidence. That's what I would have ripped. So I don't know. I can do a bigger, the only bigger like stamp endorsement is Dr. Tom, but like, you know, everything like, like it was a rip Tom combination to rip, rip. I, I value just him just as much. He's, um, as a trainer. Yeah. I, I owe rip a lot. Like wouldn't have had the career I've had, uh, if it wasn't for rip. Now, when I met you in Puerto Rico, WWE uh, had allowed you to go there. You were still under contract with them. But I understand you went back to Puerto Rico for WWC after yes. your first WWE release and had a long run there. And uh, I'm just wondering how that run was and how you survived financially on the WWC pay, which is sometimes not all that reliable. Well, uh, first and foremost, I'm alive and I have my health. Um, but no, I, I say that in jest, obviously. Um, great time down there. Um, believe it or not, I mean, there was, you know, we'll get you next week a few times. Um, this is going to sound crazy, but Carlos and Jovico both treated me very well. You were one of the Aside, lucky ones. From, you know, we'll get you next week. We'll get you next week. At the end of the day, um, yeah, like I, I left the island and we were square, which I heard really doesn't happen. No, they must have. Uh, you must have been lucky. <laughs> That's for I, sure. Yeah, I did, I, no, we, we were square. We are square. And um, and you know what? Hats off to um, 
to both Carlos and Jovica. Um, you know, Carlos gave me an opportunity. And I, I don't forget, Carlos, um, you know, pretty much kept me down there until I went back to WWE. That's not – he didn't have to do that. Um, and he was always there with a kind word, and um, and so was Jovica. So, I, uh, again, I think fondly of them. I know a lot of uh, other – People may not necessarily, but I do. So there you go. Now, as far as your first run in WWE, you were in developmental a long time, more so than most in those days, but you were signed very young. Were you frustrated at all at any time? And what what kept you motivated? And, you know, a lot of wrestlers get depressed. Uh, what kept you fighting and keeping going and – led you to your success there eventually well you know you just it's like one day at a time and, and yes i was frustrated quite a bit um and you know but maybe i could have done some things differently too especially then in my early 20s like i was a very different person um and uh i i don't know like wrestling like I, i've learned a lot of life lessons because of wrestling but i mean i probably would have learned them anyway just in maybe a different field but um but nevertheless, they were learned um, through wrestling. So I, um, you know, I would have done some things differently if I was younger. But then at the time, I made the best decision I could. So that's all any of us can do really at any point in our life, you know. I think it's the how last. We learn from what happens. The last time I actually talked to you in person was, I think, in Buffalo, New York at a WWE show. I was being an extra on or something, but you had a, a match. It was on a house show and you were being managed by two ladies and it seemed like it was a cool gimmick. Did that gimmick ever make it to TV? No. Whatever uh, happened. That, that was uh, almost there and then it got plugged up, pulled last second. But that, that was almost, yeah, that was a, um, that was a fun character and, um, that was with uh, Beth and Shelly, and um, they were both great performers. And um, that, you know, that, that was a very unique and interesting character. And um, and yeah, it's just one of those things that never really kind of made it to TV. Uh, big ass T Bone wants to know who was your favorite partner to work with over the years. I know you were also WWC Tag Team Champions with Sean Spears. For anyone that doesn't know that out there, and Rico Suave. Let's not forget Rico Suave. No, Rico was my old manager and, uh, for a bit too, so I got a good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was Rico Suave, Tamatonga, uh, Sean Spears. Yeah, there was um, there was a few. Uh, I, you know, it's funny. Like, there's been so many different partners I've had. Um, like Nova was the first guy that really kind of like took me as a young kid under his wing and showed me stuff. Um, we were a really, really good team. Um, again, I, I said, Cody, how business wise him and I are, um, we, we never had a bad segment. Um, and we're asked to do a lot of different things from entertainment segments to backstage to go out there and have, you know, how like one time they added a, uh, an extra segment on raw. Uh, and we were against the colognes. Thank God. Um, but it was like, we, we always did what was asked of us and it always came off good. So that was something I'm, uh, very grateful for, you know, Miz, like I'd say Miz and I as a team, but like we never, I was literally wrestling the invisible man outside. So who can, you know, um, I, I really, I mean, I, have, I never had a partner I didn't like, shall we say, right? Like I never had to worry about like, Oh, what's this person doing with, you know, no, it was always, always cool. I, I was blessed in that respect. Now, Haku is very popular on this channel. We use him in our company up here in Canada. And you mentioned you were partners with Tama Tonga. How is he uh, in personality compared to Haku? Is he similar? Like, is there crazy Love stories about him? Or is he more down to earth and uh, less wild? I love them both. Um, Haku, I mean, again, what, what, toughest guy in the business ever, um, but one of the nicest, kindest, um, just chill people ever. 
Um, Tama, him and I roomed together for almost six months, right? And never had a crossword between us, had fun every day, always went to the gym, always trained. Um, we, yeah, that was, that was, we had a good time. That was really, really, uh, fond memories. You're getting uh, some tips here, which I can send you later, but uh, Mark Anthony Given tips you $10, and he said when you mimic the Miss Miz, that was his favorite memory of you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, wait, wait. Did... You're freezing up. There's money? Yeah, I think you've got uh, some of these fans have given tips. You have... I think uh, $32 in tips right now. Tell you what. Tell you what. I don't know what you normally do with this. Um, if this is actually real money, how about we donate it to a local food bank? Sure. We, we usually pay pallet to the person after. Can you just donate it to a local food bank? I appreciate all these people doing this, but let's, uh, let's help somebody in the Ottawa area. Or is there any charity you yeah. like or? Okay. No, I think in in this cold weather, this time of year, it's a it's a good it's a good donation. Awesome. Uh, Derek says you have an actor sense and look. Can you see yourself in a comedy or drama feature film in the future? I have an actor sense. Oh, oh, oh! Like an essence, made. Well, well, thank you, and that's definitely due to the new haircut. Um, I, I think none of us are gonna argue with that. I. And I'm sorry, but I, I did finally get a COVID haircut uh, after not uh, not getting a haircut all year, and there was just it, it was it was like a Seinfeld episode yesterday with um, as far as my haircut goes. So I didn't mean to be uh, you know so egocentric there, but it, it was a quite a day, shall we say, yesterday. But anyways, um, yes, I uh, I'm actually in LA, and um, or not in LA, I should say. I live outside LA. Uh, but I'm on the West Coast, and um, you know, I was out here. Just I, I'd done some um, some independent films, and some network TV shows, and some cable TV shows, and um, you know, things are starting to kind of pick back up again. Uh, so I, I've had a couple auditions come in here and there. So that's that's about it. Uh, you probably are going to want to answer this uh, nicely uh, because you said you don't talk about this type of stuff. But Crown King of France wants to know. If you ever saw Cena burying wrestlers politically. Wait a minute. The crowned king of France is on this podcast. And Apparently he's a fed. Doesn't he have other things to worry about? We're, we're just coming out of a pandemic. <laughs> As the king and sovereign of the French people. You know, I mean, I'll answer the question, but man, you need to, I mean, get... Let's get back on track now. As, as a world, we need to come together and go, and you guys are a big part of that. So, uh, But as far as that, Your Highness, uh, no, I, I have not. Th Easier thank question. Thank you for asking me a question. Steve wants to know, is there anyone past, present, or future that you would love to have a match with? No. Um, you know, I would say Adrian Adonis, um, but – I mean, honestly, man, it's like, it's all the same T to me. I, wh whoever pays the most, I guess, <laughs> whatever you would, you know, yeah. whoever would draw the biggest gate, right? Chopper remembers you way back when you were wrestling uh, in chaotic wrestling oh. uh, with Chabalus. Do you remember that match? With who? I don't know if you can see the comment on the screen, but uh, the right? I I don't know who that is. Um, God, I I don't have CTE as far as I know, but I I don't ever remember meeting anybody of that name. Well, we have another two dollars for your charity here. Oh, thank and you. Hey, you know, it's your church charity, whatever you pick. Well, we'll, we'll give it to the, uh, the food bank here. And uh, he says he's been waiting uh, to hear from you. Uh, someone wants to see you against Abe Lincoln. Very funny. Um, what was your personal favorite match from WWE? Oh, God. Um, 
But me versus Abe Lincoln? Why would they want to see me versus Abe Lincoln? Well, he was a wrestler, supposedly. You I, kind yeah, of, uh, I guess, if you had a beard, you'd look like him a bit. Huh? But he had, he didn't have the mustache thing. So I, I look like Abraham Lincoln. That's that's interesting. Huh? Um. So as far as WWE, a favorite match. Um, look, Money in the Bank was great. Um, the one that I won, but not because I won, because we were in Philadelphia and they were all heels, and we made Cody a babyface. Um. You know, Miz and I had some awesome matches with the Usos. Uh, you know, Cody and I wrestled one time for like 45 minutes in South Africa in an outdoor stadium. Um, God, there have been there have been a lot. Sheamus and I had a few good ones. Um, there's been so many, I can't honestly. Like, those were a few. Um, just kind of like throw them at you. But off the top of my head, like, I, I could never pick one. And say like, oh, this is my crown jewel. It's no. Walter, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not like a wrestler answering questions. I just, I, I keep it real with everybody. I just, I, I let you know how I'm feeling. You ask, I let you know. There you go. No negative comments don't card running in now. <laughs> no, the only negative comments are towards WWE. I guess people don't feel that they uh, used your right. Walter <laughs> wants to know. Uh, if you have any thoughts on the new Thunderdome concept. Uh, the Thunderdome, is that what they were doing on Raw? With, with the people, uh, that's where they have the people on the screens instead of live fans. Oh, I think that's cool. Yeah, I think that's cool. As far as uh, NWA or UWN bringing back live fans, do you think that's something that could happen in the near future? Or is it still pretty far away? I'm I'm hoping 2021. I mean, they they say uh, the vaccine is approaching quickly, um, and you know we'll see, we'll see. I, I think as as people look, I mean, obviously, yeah, this whole thing sucked, um, big time. We all know, uh, but there's so much negativity, man, and like. You know, I, I don't. I, I try not to watch the news, but even on the phone, you're just bombarded with everything. And like, let's give ourselves credit as a species, right? Like, we're we're pretty resilient. And um, you know, look, the the Black Plague it wiped out like was it a third of Europe or something like that? Um, forgive me if I'm historically inaccurate, but it was a lot. Um, and like, look, we we dealt with this in a matter of months. Look where we're at. And yes, there was a shortage of toilet paper and we had to stay home and we have to wear masks sometimes. But like, just let's let's think of the, you know, the positive. And, and that's not to take away from anyone who's had it or lost anyone to it. Um, no, it's terrible. Um, but it, and, you know, it, it never should have ha happened. But I, I don't think like in terms of a, a global population, like we're like, OK, let's just be a little smarter and uh, we'll go from there and we'll get things back going. So my my opinion. I, I, I tend to be an eternal optimist, but I don't know how it is in California, but here they've recently, three weeks ago, shut down the gyms again in in all the major cities, which is just brutal. Mm -hmm. uh, even though there hasn't been that much evidence that, that the gyms were causing the spread or anything like that. Yeah. Rec wants to know uh, why Adrian Adonis. Were you a fan of his growing up, or was he just a character you like? Big time fan of his. Number one, the man no sold the laws of physics. Okay. When you are 280 something pounds and you move better than any cruiserweight today, there's, there, there's something going on there. You, you, you made some kind of a deal. Where you're like, hey, this, yeah, th th this whole gravity thing don't work for me, um, and uh, so that, and, and, and go back and watch him, and you'll see exactly what I mean. But the the heel he was and the worker he was, absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Because people never shut up when he was in there; they never stopped booing him. That was a skill, you know. Um, one of the best heels in the business, in my opinion. I recently interviewed his daughter, and she had some great stories about him. There was a fan on here earlier that wanted to know 
when you won the money in the bank, were they open with you at the start that, hey, this is not going to lead to a big push or anything? No. Or was it? Okay. Not at all. Not at all. It was week to week. I see. Um, I'm only going to say this guy's comment because he tipped $5, but it's kind of a silly comment. Has Hulk Hogan ever called you the N-word? Of course not. No. Um, funny attempt at being funny. Mike wants to know your favorite FCW memory. Mm. Mm. God, okay, so that that <laughs> FCW is a very fun time. Uh, there's a lot of memories outside of uh, of work that I hold dear. Um, Howard Finkel announcing me when I had won the FCW 15 title, and you know I got to hear that and hey, no, and he said my name afterwards and i was just like okay this is the coolest thing ever so that was i i'd have to say that's my best professional memory in fcw that was pretty cool and you've mentioned several times by now uh you're aging in reverse uh what are some of your secrets uh to staying in shape and 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 keeping looking a lot of people say i look like you i don't see it but oh well, yeah you're looking good what are well, some I, of your secrets? Uh, yeah, I uh, so number one, you have to have um, just take care of your skin. You know, wh whatever product you use, I'm not going to endorse a product, but I, I definitely have a regimen. It's not that hard. Um, in fact, it's quite simple, and I, I cut out a lot of the expensive creams and everything like that. Um, but you know, just try to take care of yourself. Um, just just try to stay moving, and um, you know, you can you can always gain or lose weight. You only get one epidermis so just take take care of your skin please you have another five dollar tip here from matthew he says thanks for doing this and helping a charity what's your favorite halloween costume and favorite candy favorite halloween costume uh i i, I love vampires that that's my thing i would uh you know get all the teeth in and the hair yeah you know cry little sister lost boys type stuff uh, definitely, excuse me, definitely vampires. Um, I'm a Three Musketeers guy. Interesting. Were you ever a wrestler at all growing up? But Mounds is always good, too. I see. So, someone on here is asking how the Royal Rumble matches work. Are they crazy to... Uh, to put together or to remember your place with everyone involved? Uh, no, no. Um, you know, it's 30 men enter every minute. Another guy comes down. Don't get thrown over the top rope. That's how I answer your question. No, it's not. Um, you know, and again, I'm sure there's more spots that are intricate and, uh, and more complex than others, but you know, at the end of the day, look, Occasionally mess ups happen, but we're all pros. So, uh, someone that's having a birthday today wants to know. You already talked a bit about working with the Miz, but do you have any stories about the Miz you could share with us? No, you know, uh, in Mike and I, we've been friends for a long time. Um, we met each other I think 2004 in uh, in Louisville, and. We were never super tight, but I mean, no, we, we went out, you know, a whole group of us and like I've been to his house and stuff like that. So we're, we're friends. Right. Um, but like, we didn't always travel together. Um, but we, I tell you, when it came to work, we were right there and, um, I, uh, yeah, not, not too many like mid stories outside the ring, but always cool. And I think one of the best performers in the game today. Long Duck Dong gives a $2 tip and says, is there anyone you'd like to tag with that you haven't tagged with yet? No. Nope. But thank you for asking. I, I appreciate that. I've had, again, some great partners, but really no one comes to mind. Um, and thank you for your donation. 
And Mike wants to know, is there anyone that you think needs to be in the WWE Hall of Fame that isn't? I don't think Adrian Adonis is in there yet, or Lanny Poffo. I, I, Adrian, for sure, absolutely. Um, I would put Lanny Poffo in there. Uh, it's funny, I don't really follow the Hall of Fame, but uh, <laughs> Adrian would be my guy, yeah. Um, Derek wants to know who your favorite manager is of all time. That's a pretty good question. Oh my God. Um, uh, Dr. Style Slick. The man has his PhD in style. Where do you even go to get a PhD in style? Where does that even happen? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's in the song drive slow, bro, but I actually like that song. Yeah, um, but no, uh, and, and it's funny because uh, right after I left WWE, or not actually, not right after, it was a while, like I did a WrestleMania signing, and um, on the way, uh, I was actually going to Louisville to, um, to visit my girlfriend, and I sat next to the Dr. Style on the plane from Orlando to Louisville, and he is a pastor at a church in Louisville, so... You know, what are the odds? But really cool I got to do that. And last fan question I'll take, because we're going to wrap this up in a minute. A few wrestling fans have asked you this on here. What's your favorite pro wrestling movie and why? My favorite pro wrestling movie? Wow. I'm going to say Body Slam. That's a good one. Yeah. It's hard to watch these days. They took it off YouTube. Yeah, yeah, but I want to say that. Interesting. You were a, P a Piper fan too then. Oh, oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So where can fans uh, look you up? Oh, we got another tip from Long Duck Dong, another $2. He says, thank you hey. for taking thanks for taking the time to do this. So I thank you for that too. But uh, where can you. fans follow you? Uh, you can get a hold of me on Instagram at the Aaron Files, that's T H E A R O N Files, on Twitter at Aaron's Thoughts, A R O N S Thoughts. And as far as the United Wrestling Network and Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, which you talked about too, are they still doing tapings on top of this United Wrestling Network? Oh, yeah. Yes, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. We got some huge tapings coming up in November, but, uh, but Primetime Live, again, what, like if you haven't seen it, check it out. You don't know who's going to show up. We have again people like Peter Avalon versus Chris Dickinson happened last week. That's AWA talent. Uh, you know Hammerstone. Um, that's MLW. We have Harry or uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. Excuse me. Um, like Eric Redbeard, formerly known as Roan, is going to be on the show this week. Actually, this week, if you're going to watch it, um, this week coming up, um, that would be November third. So you're going to want to check this out, right? Uh, in one night, Rowan, who is uh, now known as Eric Redbeard, is making his first appearance outside the WWE. We're going to have um, Davey Boy Smith Jr. there, Fred Ross, or formerly known as Darren Young, um, you know, Leo Rush. It, it's just, it's, you want to check this out because you've never seen a show quite like this where just people will show up, production is there, and, um, and yeah, we're just... Very, very thankful for our uh, partners at Thunder Studio. And another fan here has donated six ninety nine, and she just says thank you. Hey, you're very welcome. And uh, and please again check out Primetime Live, United Wrestling Network, available on Fight TV, Direct TV, and uh, you know you can always go to United Wrestling Network if you need some direction. What What's your next match on Primetime Live? Who knows. Who knows? You, know yet. you know, I, I've called out the tag champions of the NWA, and I think that uh, if we get some visas, you know, uh, straightened out for the question mark, we can get him back from on Grobe. Who knows? Who knows? You'll have to wait and see. To wrap this up, uh, could we get uh, maybe you in character for 20 or 30 seconds to give the fans uh, a little treat? A treat? Well, I mean, this is Halloween, so you're expecting me to treat. Well, here's a trick. 
It's been me the whole time. I don't like anyone. I'm smarter than everyone. How's that? You've all been tricked. So there's your treat. <laughs>